back at the top of the hour. Your bottom line starts now. Hello, I'm Jerry Willis, and this is Your Bottom Line, the show that saves you money. Nickeled and dimed, we'll tell you how to protect yourself from bank fees. Then the best time to buy, winter, spring, summer, fall, a month-to-month -month guide on how to score the very best deals. And travel for less, hey, we all need a break sometimes. Summer getaways that fit your budget. Your Bottom Line starts right now. We begin with one red-hot topic, health care reform, push and push back in Washington. No matter what happens, you're going to feel it. In a recent CNN opin opinion research poll, Americans ranked health care as the most important non-economic issue facing this country, followed by the deficit and the ongoing wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. In a primetime address Wednesday night, President Obama stated his case for health care reform, saying it's crucial in the effort to rebuild our economy from what he calls a a full-blown crisis. This is not just about the 47 million Americans who don't have any health insurance at all. Reforms about every American who has ever feared that they may lose their coverage if they become too sick, or lose their job, or change their job. And it's about the fact that the biggest driving force behind our federal deficit is the skyrocketing cost of Medicare and Medicaid. So let me be clear. If we do not control these costs, we will not be able to control our deficit. If we do not reform health care, your premiums and out-of-pocket costs will continue to skyrocket. So, one person who knows all about high medical costs is Jaquetta Williams. She's a TV anchor reporter, formerly with our affiliate WSB in Atlanta. Jaquetta, welcome. Great to see you. Thank you so much, Jerry. It's so good to see you as well. Now, I want to tell our viewers here, you are a cancer survivor and just recently celebrated your two-year anniversary being cancer-free. And yet, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. <laughs> and yet, you say the health care system failed you. You had coverage when you were first diagnosed, and yet you faced thousands of dollars of out-of-pocket costs. Tell us about that. Well, you know, I, one thing I will say about having health care coverage, you know, a lot of people feel like I have good insurance, so I should be covered. However, there are still, you know, absorbent amount of uh, costs that you could incur. I have been a victim of that personally. You know, I remember when I was going through my uh, cancer journey, one of the things that was most important for me was getting rest, getting sleep, um, being up and ready for my cancer treatments. But a bottle of Ambien to help me sleep and it was about 20 pills or so was hundred and twenty five dollars and that's something that I had to have but insurance did not cover so I had to pay that one hundred and twenty five dollars another thing that people don't keep in mind when you are going through something like that and this is why I understand why some people still try to work while they're going through their cancer treatments is that when you go on disability there is a portion of your paycheck that you are receiving but not all of it so you're battling for your life. You're still trying to maintain a home, a car, bills. Right. And, and in the middle of that, trying to make certain that you are staying on the path of recovery. So for somebody like me, I couldn't think about all of those other right. things. I just wanted to get well. But I had to think about them because they were important to me and my health care. Well, Jaquetta, I can't imagine the pressures of fighting the cancer and fighting the bill collector at the same time. I know the pressures must have been extreme, but I want to bring in some experts now joining us to help make sense of the reform and what it could mean for people like Jaquetta and you, frankly, is Andrew Rubin from NYU's Langone Medical Center. He's also the host of Healthcare Connect on Sirius XM Doctor Radio. And Deanne Friedholm is the healthcare reform director from Consumers Union. Now, Deanne, I want to start with you. You're a proponent of the president's plan. You think it's a great idea. Why do we have to act right now? Well, I think the uh, first thing to think about is that there are 14,000 people every day in America who are losing their insurance. And there are countless others that experience exactly what Jaquita just described. They have bought insurance, they think they at least have catastrophic coverage, and they don't find out until it's too late when they experience something like a major illness such as cancer, that in fact there are huge holes in their coverage that are going to lead them to financial uh, devastation, bankruptcy, losing of houses, 
Uh, we hear these right. stories over and over again. Well, Andrew, I want to turn to you now. And this plan is not inexpensive. It's going to cost a trillion dollars over 10 years. And there are many moving parts. Yes, it's going to cover everybody, but should we move right now? Are we moving too quickly? That's what critics would say. Well, I, I think everybody agrees that we have a problem, and it's, it's bipartisan. Healthcare is not working right now for a lot of people. So the, the debate really is how fast do you move it? And, and I think we have to do something. We have to solve pre-existing condition problems for people. But the question that really has to be addressed is how fast we're we going to do it. And I think we need to slow it down a little bit. All right. Well, I want to bring in one other person now, Jessica Kohler. She's about to age out of her parents' insurance policy, and her new job isn't yet set to offer her coverage. Let's, let's ask you, what's your situation? What is the problem? And how has the system failed you? Well, I have to say, I have a brain tumor that I've been battling for some time, and I've been told that it can be treated with medication. Unfortunately, my out-of-pocket expenses are going to be about seven or $8,000 next month because on my birthday, my birthday gift where I should be celebrating being on this earth is going to be spent going to the bank to make a big withdrawal so I could stay alive until September 1st when my new coverage kicks in. Well, Jessica, you know, I have to say, you know, we, we sympathize with you and we hope everything goes well. Thank you. But Deanne, turning to you, I mean, this has got to be one of the big problems of the system. People fall in the gaps. They don't have coverage when they most need it. What can we do? What should we do? Is the president's plan enough here? Well, it unfortunately is pretty complicated. It would depend on some of the particulars of her circumstances. But generally speaking, for most people, uh, there, everyone would have access to some kind of plan uh, without regard to pre-existing condition. This was one of the most important changes that is desperately needed um, right. in our health care system, and this, that would help her a lot. She would not be left with a gap in coverage uh, between losing her mother's coverage and starting her new job. Andrew, you know, if we delay, you know, do we face the possibility uh, of more people falling through the holes in the system, uh, of not helping people who really need it right now? So, Jerry, that's a great question. I actually don't think people are talking about delaying, and they shouldn't be talking about delaying because, as your, as your guests point out, they're in a bind, and the, the, the bind grows bigger and bigger and deeper and deeper for more Americans every day. I think what we have to do is take, you know, the legislation that's being proposed in, in, you know, in both, both sides of the aisle and find middle ground quickly, and President Obama's mm -hmm. done a great job of that, keeping it front and center, and finding the pieces that get us closer and closer. Listen, health care got messed up over many, many decades. It's not going to be solved in four to six weeks of, you know, legislative battles. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. I want to thank my guests here. Jaquetta, thank you. Andrew, Deanne, and Jess, just a special word to you. We, we're thanking the best for you and hoping the best. Good mm -hmm. luck to all of you. Thanks so much. Good luck. Watching your household expenses is so important right now. How overdraft and bank fees are up and what you can do to protect your money.